Hello, in this tic-tac-toe video we're gonna look at some extras and where to go from here. You now have a working tic-tac-toe game so congratulations. If you want to check out some of the previous videos, you just want to recap some stuff, feel free to do that before looking at this video. As usual the GitHub link is provided so check that out for the code. But now what to do next? You got this awesome tic-tac-toe game, but there's plenty more features that you can implement to increase your knowledge, to improve your knowledge of tic-tac-toe, of game development, of programming, and more specifically Cocos 2DX. And to help with that, we will provide a link to our Cocos API guide, which is cocos.sonarlearning.co.uk but we're going to provide a link to it. So let's get started. What can you implement? Here's some extra tasks for you to implement which are really really cool the first thing is more achievements if i click on achievements free achievements place your first piece win and lose just add more it's, it's as simple as that you can add more achievements you i also want you to add progress tracked achievements achievements such as how many games you have won how many pieces you have placed that would be awesome as well so if you have an achievement where you have to place 100 pieces or win 100 times you would need to do that condition 100 times before you would get it so it would be progress tracked which is fantastic it doesn't matter whether you're on ios or google play services or you're using some other sort of system you'll have a very similar system so check that out another thing is implement more features from the cocos helper because it provides easy to use features such as ads which are video ads ban ads big ads all that good stuff it provides social sharing it also provides obviously game achievements leaderboards that sort of stuff so implement that another thing is leaderboards implement some leaderboards you might be thinking how can you do that yeah with tiktok time it's going to require some originality we could do it time based how long does it take for you to you know win a match and yeah you, you could do it based on that so the next thing you could do is audio we have audio functionality aka disabling and enabling audio this does actually do that but we got no audio implemented and that was by design i wanted the functionality there to enable and disable it which is it's theoretically it's an easy concept but to implement it in a way that it works as seamlessly like this because we've got like one line of code to do it the cocos help, help our hands all of the back end for you we do all of that but we wanted to implement some sound effects you could have a like music you could have a button click sound effect so if i click on this it play the sound effect you could have one when i place a piece so if i were to lose for example you could have a sound effect for losing something like Wah, wah, wah. and for winning well done obviously those are voices but you could just have sound effects so you could have a sound effect for this and obviously like i was saying music so implement that like i said the cocos api guide will be provided as a link for for this video so all of that sort of code for playing audio is provided and contextual game over screens what i mean by that is let me just lose if i look at the screen i don't actually know have i won or have i lost how someone that says you've won you've lost maybe a different color maybe this is in in a different position so i can actually still see the board update it so it's just more user friendly okay the next thing is modify the pause menu to have a retry button at the moment you got a play button which is just the resume button and a home button which takes you back to the main menu what if you want to retry you would have to click on the home button then click on the play button that's double the amount of steps that's two steps instead of it being one actually okay it's three steps because technically you have to click the pause button but i was sort of ignoring that aspect of it but yeah it's two i mean three steps instead of two so also Try changing it so there's a title here. So you say pause, you know, have some a different background for it. Remember, for the pause and the game over and a lot of the buttons, we implemented different hash defines, yet we reuse a lot of the assets. But because we have different hash defines, you can easily modify that. So that's all good stuff. Another thing, 
you can do. Originally, the game was two player before AI was actually implemented. Bring that back, have two modes, one for AI, one for two player. That would be awesome. Maybe you want to play with a friend. Maybe you want to play yourself. Maybe you do, I don't know. Another one, track the statistics and have a stats page. So maybe from the main menu, you could have a button called stats, takes you to a page, it could show you, obviously you would have, let's say achievements for, you know, unlocking certain achievements based on st certain stats, certain conditions, but you might want, you know, total time played, the, the total amount of pieces you've placed, the amount of times you've lost, the amount of pieces the enemy has placed, the amount of this, the amount of that, maybe you might want it, the amount of times you're checking achievements, the amount of times you've clicked play button, the amount of times you've paused. You can track pretty much anything, and I love statistics. Another thing, you could have a settings page to do stuff like, well, chain the pieces in terms of like the sprite image. Have more images there. Provide your own images. If you're all, if you love art, you create art, creating art, change them. If you're not, that's fine. You could just do something quickly in Paint or if you have Photoshop, or you could use just some assets off the internet. We will be providing all, pretty, most of our assets royalty free very very soon via an easy to search platform have a theme based system that you could swap out in the settings so instead of like this sort of yellow and black theme you could have a black and white theme a red and white theme you could have like not just color based you could have a total different theme you could have like a video game based themes where the pieces you're placing maybe is the head of mario and the head of sonic for example something like that Another thing you could implement into the game is unlockables. So when you've won 10 times, you could unlock a new theme and that could be linked with a settings page to be able to swap out the unlockables, to activate the unlockables. Also, randomize the AI movements. And what I mean by that, you might be thinking, well, if we randomize it, it won't be very good. What I mean is if I click in the middle space, Tic-Tac-Toe has some general game logic with, which we've implemented to create like an optimized Tic-Tac-Toe. One of the game logics is when it places a piece, check if you can place one in the center. If it, well, can, of no, actually, the first condition it really should check is can it win? If it can't win, then can it block the player from winning? If it can do that. If those two conditions are never met, then can it place a piece in the center? It couldn't. The next condition is can it place a piece in one of the four corners? It could, but the problem with the way we've implemented it at the moment, it just places it in the first free corner. So if I were to have one there, you'll just go to the next one, to the next one. So you can play it a few times and sort of see the way the AI works. But if you randomize it, so it needs to be placed in one of the corners, randomizing so you might be there and there's conditions after that if you can't place it in one of the corners or the middle space and it can't block you or you can't win then you'll place it into one of the other four spaces again randomize it maybe you want to try and even go a step further add an extra layer to the AI, AI to predict the player's movements that would be fantastic I love to see what you come up with next Button pressed states. Remember, we were saying in the code, let me just flick over to the code. If I go to definition.h, go to the buttons. We have button pressed states. That's the same for the pause button as well. But if I click on it, I haven't let go yet. It's technically changed the image, but it's just it's the same one again. But try changing it. So sometimes people zoom in on it. I mean, like make it bigger, make it smaller highlight it make it sort of like a 3d sort of click state so it goes in it invert the colors that sort of stuff try implementing that even if you again aren't great at artwork and don't have access to any images just use one of these images like just use a circle for it doesn't matter as long as you understand the concepts behind it when the time comes to you using artwork that you've been provided again whether that's something you've created found or you're collaborating with someone you'll be all good to go. The next thing, implement difficulty. That's a bit more daring. 
because again that links in with you know the sort of the extra complex layers of AI but maybe you're comfortable with that maybe you came to this course just more to you know as a refresher or just to learn about Cocos 2DX but maybe you're a solid AI guy maybe you're solid at C++ maybe you're a solid programmer and you want to tackle difficulty and that would be fantastic try that you could essentially do difficulty by having this as the hardest difficulty or this as a medium difficulty the hardest has the randomness applied and the lowest difficulty simply just puts one anywhere but it doesn't try and block you that's a relatively easy way to implement difficulty that doesn't really take into consideration the way the user is really playing apart from can it you know win can it lose can it block the user from winning etc etc but apart from that it's just pretty basic so check that out that's all the list of features that you can implement going forward to improve upon your knowledge but there's a plethora of other features just check out all the tic-tac-toe games on the app stores play with your friends on on a piece of paper and you'll just think of ideas think of ideas from other games that you've played and implement them Again, that is the best way of learning. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to post them on my education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. If you like the video, thank you very much, and the GitHub link will be provided. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.